At the end of this video, you will know which tool you should use to design your website. If you're thinking about starting a website, you're easily overwhelmed with a huge offer out there. So you might have already done a little research and you heard things like 30% of the web is built with WordPress, but does that mean that's the best option for you? And your favorite YouTuber most probably has a video sponsored by Squarespace, but does that mean you should use that? These are just some questions you might have about building a website, which I try to answer in this video. And I'm also going to share some insider tips I got while working on those platforms that might surprise you. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam. And choosing a website for your business or project is a very important decision. You surely want to make the right decision for your website, because if you have to change platforms, it's a grueling task. Believe me, I did that a couple of times and it's not fun at all. So you want to get it right from the beginning. In this video, we'll have different categories for the different website projects you might have. The categories are for fun, your own small business, content creator, aka you want to build a blog, web designer with clients. What we will not cover in this video are e-commerce sites. That's a whole other topic in itself. The tools, aka the website builders we're going to look at are Wix, WordPress with and without plugins like Elementor, Weebly, Webflow, and Squarespace. And I'm also going to share where I think it's best to just flat out program your website. But don't worry, for most of the website tools we look at here, you don't need programming skills at all. As a side note, we will not look at Joomla, Gator from HostGator, GoDaddy Editor, Google Sites, and all the other builders that are out there, because in my opinion, they should not even be considered for most use cases. Let me introduce the website builders first so you get an overview of what we are talking about in this video. WordPress is one of the most commonly used platforms to build a website. Around 30% of the web is built with WordPress. A common misunderstanding though is that because it's so widely used, people use it for projects that are not really suitable for WordPress. And that happens a lot. Then it will feel more like you're finding WordPress instead of it being a handy tool. Because at the end of the day, WordPress is not really a website builder, it's a content management system. In other words, a blog management system. A lot of people, even me for the longest time, didn't know about that. Weebly and Squarespace have a very similar feel. They are drag and drop website builders. You can use many items to design a website. You can drag and drop buttons, images and more advanced tools to build a complete website in a very short period of time. Weebly and Squarespace have a pretty similar feel to them. A similar feel has also WordPress, but with site builder plugins like Elementor, Divi or Beaver Builder. WordPress relied a lot on strict templates, but a couple of years ago, these site builder plugins made WordPress more flexible. Wix is also a drag and drop editor, but compared to Weebly and Squarespace, it has no limited design capabilities. Weebly and Squarespace will only let you put items into an imaginary grid, Whereas Wix feels like you would design a website with PowerPoint or Keynote. You literally can drag and drop items anywhere with Wix. The last one is Webflow and the just launched beta version of Wix Editor X. But let's only focus on Webflow because this is production ready. Webflow should be more considered a professional tool as it has its origins directly from programming CSS. I would recommend at least a little HTML and CSS programming knowledge if you start with Webflow. In a nutshell, Webflow is a tool which you can use instead of writing code to design a website, you just do it with a graphical user interface. Just a little bit about pricing. I won't go into too much detail because it's very, very complicated to actually look at it, but just to give you a little overview here. So let's go from low cost to high cost. The only platforms that have totally free packages, even though with their branding on it, are Weebly and Wix. Technically, WordPress is free as well, but you have to host it yourself, which sounds more complicated than it actually is, but it will cost around $100 a year. The WordPress website builder plugins I talked about can be used for free. Especially the Elementor plugin has many key features for free already in it. But the Pro version costs the Elementor Pro $50 US a year, the Beaver Builder around $100 US a year, and Divi $90 a year. A little side note to the theme builders. I personally think Elementor is the best choice, not just because it's cheaper, but also because the interface itself and the big steadily growing community around it. So from now on, I will just refer to Elementor when talking about the page builder plugins for WordPress. 
So as a summary, a WordPress site is around $100 per year or $150 with the Elementor Pro, which you might or might not need. After that come Wix, Weebly and Squarespace with their paid plans for a standard website with domain, which will cost Weebly $150 a year, Wix $250 a year and Squarespace also $250 a year. Last but not least, Webflow is around $200 a year, but it's a little bit more complicated with their pricing plan. And a little tip, don't get sucked into the special 50% discounts for the first year. Many of the website builders have a 50% discount for the first year and after the second year you're going to learn that your little hobby blog does not cost just a little over $100 per year, but now $250 per year, which is quite a difference. All right, that was a lot of information. Let's take them all in and do a little summary. WordPress is the blog management website builder. A little complicated, but highly optimized for a professional blog. Squarespace and Weebly are the drag and drop builders that are easy to use. Squarespace is a little bit more sophisticated, whereas Weebly is a little less expensive. WordPress with plugins like Elementor feel a lot like Weebly and Squarespace too, because they're drag and drop editors as well. They make WordPress more customizable and are a real alternative to other website builders if you have to use WordPress as a platform. Wix is the free flow editor, which feels like PowerPoint, but has a lot of features even for a more complicated project. Webflow and the new Wix Editor X are professional tools which can be an alternative to coding, but still need some basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. I hope you have a little overview right now. Don't worry if things still seem a little complicated. We're going to go through different use cases and which website builder is best for which use case. So let's start with the first category. If you want to build a website just for fun, so let's say a little gallery for your last family vacation, just another project that came to mind, then I highly suggest Weebly or Wix. There is no need to pay anything for the other website building tools if you can do it for free with Weebly or Wix. Weebly surely has a little steeper learning curve, but can help you a little more design-wise because you are a little more boxed in and have to use good styling patterns. Whereas with the free-flowing Wix editor, you design as somebody who has no design knowledge, let me just say, it can get out of hand. But my winner here would be Wix because it has a completely free plan and it's easy to use. If you're building a website for your own business, which should look professional, but doesn't have to be a super crazy efficient website, then I highly recommend either Weebly, Wix or Squarespace. I purposely left out WordPress because even with Elementor, you have to host it yourself. And to misuse a content management system to build an easy business website doesn't really make sense in my opinion. The only reason I would use WordPress is if you might see yourself having a big blog in the future, but more about that in a bit. The classical example is if you own a gym, a hair salon, a bakery, a painting business, a car shop or any other good old small business, then Weebly, Wix and Squarespace should be considered. I personally see it like this. I see Weebly just as an option if it should be inexpensive. You can save around 100 US dollars a year and if that makes sense for you, then go with it. But the race for me comes down to Squarespace and Wix. Use Squarespace if you want a well-structured, intuitive and reliable platform that has the necessary support and community. Because then if your small business wants to grow its online presence, there is no limit to it. Use Wix if you like the idea more of using an editor that will let you put things wherever you want. Wix can be a little overwhelming. And a little tip, if you know your strengths are not really in design and structural thinking, you might overboard with the freedom you have with Wix. But if the freedom of design is what you're looking for, then Wix is a great platform. I built whole real estate and directory websites with it, which worked great. The difference between Wix and Squarespace mostly come down to personal preference. If you're a small business owner and you heard that in the year 2020 and beyond you need a blog for your website, but you're not really planning to hiring a content writer that writes more than 100 articles a year, then don't worry about this category because your blog with around 20 articles will be way better off on a website like Squarespace, Wix or Weebly we talked in a category before. Because this category is for you if you're planning to start a blog as a business. Then the clear winner is WordPress. WordPress is built exactly for that. It's surely more complicated and needs more background knowledge about how to build a website, but it's in my opinion still the go-to platform for a blog. 
This has to do because it can be easily optimized for SEO, has a lot of features for content management, and it's just extremely well known in the community of content writing, and it's highly scalable even if your blog takes off. It's also an open source platform, which makes it highly customizable. If you're a web designer, you should know about the platforms mentioned in this video, but I'm going to go over some things to consider. WordPress or not. My personal view is don't use WordPress if there's no professional blog involved. Even if the templates are good and the community is large, use something more modern where you don't have to manually update the theme and plugins. But using WordPress will save you time and hassle at the end of the day because all the things that have to work together, the theme, the plugins and the WordPress itself, make it susceptible to errors and stressful downtime. Wix for a full stack website. If you don't about a bigger project, maybe even something with a database and a backend, but your client does not want to pay the amount you quoted, then you can use Wix. Yes, Wix. A lot of people don't know, but with Wix you can build a full stack application with Wix Corvid, previously known as Wix Code. I, for example, built a directory and real estate website with it, and it takes way less time than coding it from scratch. It's not as high performing as a custom built website, but it certainly needs way less time. Check it out. It's an amazing tool not a lot of people know about. To code or not to code. If it's just a simple website, use an editor like Wix or Squarespace. But if it still needs to be a fully customizable, high performing, scalable website, then you can use Webflow. Webflow is an alternative to coding as it uses the same properties like CSS. So for example, display flex or grid. And it works with margins and paddings. But instead of writing code, you can design the website with a graphical user interface. After you're finished with the design, you can either export the CSS code directly or you can host it on Webflow itself. Again, Wix rolled out their Editor X, which is pretty similar, but it's only in their beta phase at making of this video. And if you don't like these options at all, then go ahead and start coding your website. To give you a better overview, here a little summary. For your fun projects, use Wix or alternatively Weebly. They are easy to understand and offer completely free plans. For a small business, choose between Squarespace and Wix. My personal preference is Wix, but Squarespace might help you support your design more with its fixed structure. For a blog as a business, in my opinion, no doubt, choose the open source contact management system, WordPress. That's what it's built for. If you're a web designer and you know these tools, but you're thinking about coding, keep in mind that Wix Corvid is an alternative to a full stack application and Webflow can be a real handy tool as an alternative to coding your website while still having all the flexibility and advantages of code. Of course, this was just my personal opinion from the experiences I have with these platforms. I hope this video helped to give you an overview of which platform you could use for your next website. I hope this video helped. If it helped, leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.